Hello people, in this video let us look at aortic regurgitation. So basically this is your left ventricle and here you have the aortic valve and here you have the aorta and the left ventricle is going to send the blood into the aorta and this aortic valve is going to close, isn't it? This is how normally it works. But in aortic regurgitation what happens? The blood, okay, after this valve closes, right, the blood is able to leak back into the left ventricle. So this will cause left ventricular hypertrophy because the left ventricle has to go on pumping this blood out and out. And this situation is something that is to be corrected at the earliest because this is something that uh, the damage uh, becomes severe which cannot be corrected later. So aortic regurgitation as such has to be corrected very early. Okay. What you should know here is who is getting damaged? The left ventricle initially, right? That is getting severely damaged. And what else guys, uh, let's guess what, el what else is happening. So basically you understood left ventricle in, uh, is getting affected, the load on the heart is more, we understood. So the left ventricle tries to contract with more force, okay. There is increase in the stroke vol volume, okay. And what is this here? The systolic blood pressure is very high and the diastolic blood pressure is very low because what happens when the left ventricle is undergoing diastole, right. The left ventricle is undergoing diastole, right? There was no blood supposed to come back, right? But ev all, everything is coming back, right? So this is what is making the diastolic blood pressure low. So systolic blood pressure is very high. Diastolic blood pressure is low, okay? And these people, you have to operate soon. This much we have understood. Now look at the um, diagram here. So what happens is when this blood is coming back, right into the left ventricle from the aortic valve it can also touch the mitral valve the mitral valve is here between the left atrium and the left ventricle so it can also touch the leaflets of the mitral valve and there can be um, some murmurs because of the mitral valve okay we will look at all of that but first of all see here so you have s1 and s2 right heart sounds and s2 is because of a2 and p2 isn't it so when sh uh, that is a2 and p2 close that is why you get s2 so when a2 closes after that only the blood is leaking back. So definitely you can understand that this will be a diastolic murmur. So after S2 you will get this. So this will be a diastolic murmur that is you are getting it after A2. You can see it very clearly in this diagram. So what is this called as EDM? What is EDM? Diastolic murmur I am sure but what is E? Yes that is early diastolic murmur. Okay early diastolic murmur. You can see it is just a decreasing kind of a murmur. It is a decrescendo murmur. There is no ascend, um, uh, crescendo, decrescendo is not there. Only decrescendo is there in this. Okay, It is only decreasing kind of a thing you can remember. And if there is a mitral valve involvement, here you will have a mid diastolic murmur also because of the mitral valve being involved. That is called as the Austin flint murmur. So here what, so guys look at the normal heart sounds here. So you have the S1 and the S2 and um, when does uh, this um, S2 happen? When A2, P2 close, right? This is uh, S2. So what happens in these people? A2 has a problem, right? A, is a, a has the problem when it closes also bl blood is flowing back. So you can have a soft A2 in these people. That is a soft S2 you can say. Uh, aortic valve has problem. Here what is happening? There is a decrescendo kind of a murmur. So it is decreasing. This is also called as an early diastolic murmur, a seagull type of murmur or a decrescendo murmur, right? And um, what else you are seeing? If the mitral valve is involved, you can have a mid diastolic murmur, Austin Flint murmur. Then uh, because when the uh, blood is coming back to the left ventricle and the left ventricle is having more blood and it is kind of uh, enlarged, river, the next time it will contract with greater force, isn't it? So what will happen? You can have an ejection click here, right? Uh, it is possible uh, due to more force of contraction, okay? In these people, if aortic regurgitation is also involved with aortic stenosis, what will happen? You have already seen aortic stenosis. That time, um, you will have a crescendo, decrescendo murmur, isn't it? Ejection click murmur. Sorry, uh, ejection systolic murmur can happen if there is aortic stenosis also. Okay, this much you understood. So, what and all will you see here in heart sounds? You will see a soft S2, a soft A2. You will see a seagull type of a, a murmur, early diastolic murmur. You can see a mid-diastolic murmur or Austin print murmur if the mitral valve is involved. Then if there is aortic stenosis, you can have ejection systolic murmur. You can have an ejection click. Then they have marked S4. S4 is always because of aortic involvement. So, if after the left ventricle got involved, if the left atrium also gets involved, then you can have an S4. Let's listen to aortic regurgitation. Aortic regurgitation, guys.
that was interesting did you make out a, a early diastolic murmur okay now let's continue with the causes for all this um, aortic regurgitation so basically you should know that it can be chronic or acute but mostly we'll be looking at chronic right um, so basically uh, here you will have uh, always right what are we look looking at whenever you have mitral valve and uh, uh, aortic valve you always blame um, rheumatic heart disease infective and endocarditis all these standard things you will blame isn't it very good then um, what will you see bicuspid aortic valve see normally all valves are uh, tricuspid except the mitral valve which you always call as bicuspid so this is already tricuspid but for some people congenitally it can be bicuspid right so instead of uh, three cusps if they are having two cusps then it can be they can have uh, a back flow of blood obviously it cannot close nicely looks like okay then uh, what else we'll see aortic valve is involved hence there is uh, aortic regurgitation so the problem they are blaming it easily on this aortic wall the wall of this aorta is affected what can be that will be called as aortic dissection right if there are tears in the inner wall of the aorta or if this dilatation of aorta aorta itself is so dilated then what will happen everything will flow back because of this um, entire thing becoming big probably right then uh, what else uh, ankylosing spondylitis marfan syndrome ehler danlos syndrome all these are standard things that you write isn't it for all uh, uh, valve problems then you have the what else uh, they are talking about um, osteogenesis imperfecta ehler danlos these are standard things that you write everywhere isn't it now let us look at the symptoms what symptoms will these people have obviously um, if uh, there is uh, uh, this kind of uh, heart coming and going back to your heart these people can have palpitations isn't it there can be pulsations everywhere in their body from uh, uvula to spleen to liver to pupil so there can be pu pulsations all over their uh, body you can see angina and severe aortic regurgitation they can have angina and that can be even at rest okay dyspnea when uh, usually when the atria is involved and the there is pulmonary edema isn't it what else you'll see these people will know that some kind of a uh, you know pounding in the head <clears throat> right uh, because the heart the blood is coming to the systemic circulation you can imagine and it is it then going back again coming going coming going so that kind of an uncomfortable feeling they will have okay now let us look at the signs of uh, aortic regurgitation guys um, how is it going what are we looking at we are looking at uh, aortic regurgitation very good it is also called as AR <clears throat> so here what will you see you will see that um, what is written here there is some thrill ok so we will come to that so there is um, flushing and blanching of forehead they are calling this as the lighthouse sign this is a very standard thing that they are telling everywhere also flushing and blanching flushing means redness and then blanching means whiteness right alternate that's what blood comes blood goes see the, we told you right the pulsations you can see the pupil the liver the spleen what else did we tell uvula right all these so they have some specific names here so uvula they are calling it as muller sign systolic pulsations then you have head bobbing we told you d massets sign you can look at some youtube videos for all these kind of uh, 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 what am i saying pulsations then you have the pupillary pulsation landorphil landolfi's sign okay then uh, what else guys you have some quinkies sign okay this is the same thing like the blanching and flushing but here they are saying when you press a glass knife on the patient's lip or nail bed you can see capillary pulsations okay then uh, dancing carotid see i am thinking something like the blood comes to the carotid and then it goes back again some kind of a dancing carotid maybe i should use a red color because it's oxygenated blood isn't it coming and going it's kind of a dancing carotid this is called as a corrigans sign if you can remember all these signs probably you have to when you have collapsing water hammer pulse systolic pressure is high diastolic pressure is low we told you the blood goes back to the heart so diastolic pressure is low systolic pressure is high it is trying to press and push again and again this blood okay so this is called as water hammer pulse or collapsing pulse nicely it comes and diastolic pressure is so low right pulse pressure is more uh, than the diastolic pressure so the, the diastolic pressure is so low that even the pulse pressure which is the difference between these two isn't it is higher okay so sometimes you are saying 60 by some very uh, low value 160 sorry by some low value that is the systolic that is the blood pressure in these people guys uh, how is it going are you able to understand the blood is coming going coming going back to the heart so you can understand what is happening pulsation systolic pressure is more diastolic pressure is less hence the pulse pressure is uh, what are they saying pulse pressure is more than the diastolic pressure okay 
then some pistol shot femorals trobs sign so in the femoral uh, arteries right femoral vein sorry femoral vein you can hear pistol shot sound it seems maybe we should hear this then coming to um, again the femoral artery okay this is the femoral artery that was the femoral vein femoral artery they are saying you can hear systolic murmur that is called as durozyce sign can you remember this at all durozyce sign is your femoral artery systolic murmur okay when it is compressed proximally and a diastolic murmur you can hear when you compress distally how will you compress using the bell of the stethoscope so you are compressed digitally or you can hear the murmur with the bell of the stethoscope is it how will you compress it the sentence is kind of wait so if this is the artery and they're showing backward flow of the blood towards the heart during diastole the pressure with the lower edge of the stethoscope is the most effective means of producing the eddy currents okay so murmur beneath the bell of the stethoscope so this isn't hard to understand guys just understand head is pounding pupil is uh, having uh, pulsation the forehead is having some blanching flushing then uh, what else did you see uh they told about the carotids they are dancing then uh, liver is pulsating spleen is pulsating uvula is pulsating then what else did you see femoral some pistol shots then you have the dorosis sign right kind of you can write but all these are terminologies are very important then coming to hills sign the popliteal cuff and the brachial cuff when you do the systolic pressure exceeds in the leg in the popliteal cuff the systolic pressure exceeds the brachial cuff by greater than 20 mm mercury so if this person is stand okay whatever his in the leg the systolic pressure is more see normally anyways it will be more because of gravity but for us it will be like the difference will be within 20 mm mercury but in these people the difference between the brachial and the uh, popliteal is greater than 20 mm it is going to be more in the popliteal cuff okay this is called as hills sign and uh, they have grading of this so why is it more in the leg okay in the leg it is more uh, because of gravity for us but for these people why is it more i kind of understand it is more all over the body the systolic pressure but it is more e uh, in the popliteal cuff because probably of gravity and it is more even more okay then coming to rosen back sign pulsations in the liver gerhard sign pulsations over the enlarged spleen, spleen so you should know that um, everywhere you have pulsations right so basically the blood is coming and going back to the heart now let's come to the other signs guys uh, so lot of uh, terminologies here in aortic regurgitation now let's go to other signs so other signs what will you see we already told you s2 will be soft because a2 will be soft then you have the apical impulse is displayed downward and outward see in these people anyways there is left ventricular hypertrophy so you can see this this apex is inferolateral right inferolateral it is going this indicates what left ventricular hypertrophy isn't it so um that kind of tells me the apical impulse is displaced downward outward is that the reason then there is this uh, austen flint murmur because it is of the if the mitral valve uh, if the if it is hitting the mitral valve right then there can be austen flint murmur right then let's go what else we have reached the severity how will you know whether it is severe or not guys so basically this austen flint murmur you can see it's severe what else um, marked peripheral signs are there if there is some hills sign hill sign is what that popliteal uh, pul- uh, cuff systolic pressure exceeds the brachial cuff systolic pressure by greater than uh, 20 so if it is greater than 60 then it is uh, severe so that you can definitely say and then here they are saying if the stroke volume see normal stroke volume is 80 if the regurgitation volume is 60 ml that is so much more is coming back the fraction is greater than 50% right then it is severe okay this much you can understand the duration of the murmur is directly proportional to the severity this is easy to say okay then now let us see what will you see in ecg ecg you will see that uh, left ventricle enlargement you will see how will you know that that is uh, in v1 the s will be very deep and in v5 or 6 the r will be very tall isn't it so this indicates left ventricular enlargement yes this image is not very clear but uh, s is very deep and um, r is very tall in r, uh, v5 so yes all this will indicate to you volume overload left ventricular enlargement okay then uh, what else will you see in x ray what will you see you just now you saw that left ventricle apex uh, inferolateral uh, displacement isn't it then 
let's go to eco echocardiogram here you can see guys uh, what can you see here let's try to understand here you have the left atrium and you have the left ventricle but atrium why are we bothered about atrium let's leave that left ventricle and here you have the aorta right so from the aorta it is going back to the left ventricle so you can see some kind of fire they are showing here and an arrow actually they have shown here it's not very clear so this is your color doppler flow imaging of aortic regurgitation so guys let us look at the management of uh, chronic they are talking usually only of the chronic here the aortic regurgitation so medically they are talking about um, ACE inhibitors are very useful, they are saying. So, we will go with what the textbook says. All these profile access, rheumatic fever, infective endocarditis, standard things that you will write for everything, isn't it? So, otherwise, what are you doing in this chronic AR? You will give diuretics, then you will give um, ACI inhibitors, right? So, basically, to reduce the afterload, calcium channel blockers. Penicillin, they will give as a profile access uh, against uh, syphilitic aortitis, okay? Beta blockers are also useful in chronic conditions. Remember, in chronic only, they are talking about beta blockers. Otherwise, it's contraindicated in the acute one. And you have to reduce the systolic blood pressure to 140 millimeter of mercury. You will try to maintain it. Not one. Usually, what did they say? Systolic blood pressure is very high. Diastolic is very low. So, systolic, they want to reduce. Okay. Surgically, what do you want to do? Um, they want to uh, do valve replacement. Very important. Even if it is asymptomatic, they want to do this. And early treatment is the best, right? In this case. Otherwise, late, they cannot manage. I think more like late they cannot repair or something. Okay. Uh, now let us go to acute AR, guys. Acute AR, some words are there here. Uh, what are the causes? Aortic uh, dissection, trauma, infective endocarditis. And uh, this is very important. Sudden death can be there in these people. Acute aortic uh, regurgitation. So, this uh, ac acute aortic regurgitation, sudden and onset it will be. Remember. And uh, whatever you saw in chronic, you no, know, that may not be there. Like in pulse pressure, you saw in uh, chronic will be wide, right? Here they have written that pulse pressure will be near normal. You saw systolic pressure will be increased. Here they are saying it is not that much increased. Diastolic pressure will be decreased, you saw in chronic. But here they are saying it can be near normal, right? So all kind of things, everything is kind of normal, normal. They are saying in uh, AO, uh, acute variety, okay? What else will you know? Mainly what I am seeing is the murmur is longer in uh, chronic and it is a little shorter in um, acute one. That is what it looks like. And this Austin Flint murmur and all is there in this uh, chronic variety. Okay. And uh, again here they are saying that the LV enlargement and all you will see in the chronic type. In the acute type this uh, left ventricle and all is normal. It did not have any much uh, uh, problem. right? So, it never was hypertrophied. But in the chronic variety it is hypertrophied. Right. One thing I am noticing in this acute um, AR, they are saying this S1 is soft or absent. Okay, so just remember this, acute is soft or absent, uh, S1 is soft or absent in acute AR. See, rheumatic will and syphilitic, see rheumatic will cause problem to the valve, but syphilitic will cause problem to the aorta, right? That is what we remember, aortic valve is affected in syphilis. So, in syphilis, what you have seen is the ascending iota can have calcification, okay? And VDRL will be positive in these people. So, syphilis affects your iota, guys. Remember that much, okay? So, this completes aortic regurgitation, guys. Remember, blood is coming out of the heart and going back to the heart, okay? And lot of named signs are there in this. What will you see here? Early diastolic murmur, okay? You will have some special Austin Flint murmur also possible, okay? Bye-bye.